Welcome back everyone, Dan Vega here, and today is going to be a little bit different. No tutorial today, but we are going to do a little show and tell. I've redone my personal website over at danvega.dev, and I want to talk about it, uh, because I know a lot of you are either building personal websites, or maybe you want to upgrade yours to something else. So it might be interesting to see a little bit behind the scenes, how I put this together, what the motivation was behind it, and how we got here. So let's do that. So danvega.dev, I've had a personal website forever. It's had a couple different domain names. I think I started out with a .org because I couldn't find anything. Uh, but now I'm on danvega.dev, and um, yeah, so it's evolved over the years. I've always like started, it, it started out as a way for me to blog and kind of show off what I'm working on on the internet, and really like my own little personal corner of the internet, a really a, a way to reflect my personality. So um, yeah, we start off blogging 20 years ago, and that was just a, a way for me to kind of give back to the community. I found something wrong, uh, I figured out a way to solve it, and then uh, I shared it with, with all of you. So yeah, we're still blogging, and there's a whole bunch of other features here. Uh, so we'll go, we'll kind of go through them. I want to walk through some of the functionality first. We'll talk about how it was built, and then we'll take a look at some code. So here we are, um, danvega.dev. Uh, one of the things that I really like right off the bat is the new look and feel. And the new look and feel is thanks to Tailwind UI. There is a uh, component or a template called Spotlight, and that is the one that I am using. Uh, this was uh, a pretty easy, easy decision for me. I knew I wanted to use Tailwind, but I also, I think I get stuck when I have to design something. I, I like doing it, it's fun for me, but if I, if I have to like figure out how everything is going to look, and in this case, how everything is gonna work like on a mobile device, I kind of get stuck sometimes. So, so giving me a really nice template that I'm happy with is an easy way to get me motivated to move forward. And that's really what happened here. This is something I've wanted to do for a while now, but with the look and feel, I just didn't know, like, do I have time to do that? And finding a template was uh, really the best place to start. Now, the thing is with this template, this template, if you go ahead and download this, is written for Next.js and React. And I am not using Next and React, so I had to do a little conversion and we'll talk about that in a bit. But first off, I love the look and feel. Uh, I love being able to just kind of switch between light and dark mode. Uh, I have this search here, which you can also trigger from Command K to go ahead and search through blog posts. So if I type uh, spring rest or what is the new, let's see, rest client, then I can just go ahead and hit enter and it will take me into that blog post. So I just have a, a little bit of an image here showing me off, uh, who I am, a little bit about me, uh, some social media icons. These were kind of the stock images that came with the website. I haven't gotten around to changing them yet. I know that I should, um, but it's not something I'm worried about just yet. I'll, I'll get to it soon. Um, I'm showing the latest three blog posts that I have in here, a way to sign up for my newsletter. And then on the template, there was this place to kind of download a CV. I'm showing off my, my the different uh, employers I've had over the years, but I don't have a download CV button yet um, just because I haven't gotten around to it. So that's the home page. Um, again, what I what I really like about it is, the ability to, let's, so if we go into a mobile view here, now we get this uh, drop down menu, which is nice. We can switch between pages. We still have light and dark mode and search, but now you see like everything's kind of collapsed and we have this nice mobile view. And um, this is something I could have done on my own, but again, I just like, it takes a lot of the me being stuck uh, out of the equation and just allows me to like write some code. So I really appreciate that. So that's the homepage. Um, let's talk about how this was built. Uh, we're using Nuxt. I am a big fan of you. I'm a big fan of Nuxt. Uh, as soon as Nuxt 3 came out, this is a long time ago now. I don't, I'd have to look it up and find out when Nuxt 3 was released. But as soon as I started hearing um, that, that this was coming out, I knew I wanted to move to Nuxt. And it's just one of been, been one of those things that I've always kind of had on the back burner and never gotten to. You can see here we're on Nuxt 3.8 as I'm recording this video. Nuxt is amazing. Everything that I think 
I'm going to need to build, Nuxt has a solution for. We'll talk through a couple of those today, but when it comes to like modules and plugins, the ecosystem is great. There's an answer for everything that I have tried to do, and that's what I really appreciate. I, I want to patch together uh, a solution. I don't want to write you know, from the ground up. So Nuxt is great. Uh, I love the docs. If you go into kind of getting started, what I really love is like, hey, here's all the things that you may run across. Uh, if you go into a guide uh, or if you go into the API, you can see all of the different things going on here. And I really appreciate that. And Nuxt is like really simple by default, but as you need to like build things and add things on, you can certainly do so, but it doesn't like give you this huge like directory structure at first. It's very minimal and I really appreciate that. So having fun with Next, we already mentioned Tailwind CSS. I'm also using, uh, I'm a uh, member uh, or I purchased uh, Tailwind UI. So I get a lot of the components and you get all of these templates for uh, out of the box and you can use them for as many projects as you want. So I really appreciate that. Uh, next content we'll talk about in a minute, but this is what is really driving both the blog and the newsletter. Um, and then I'll, I'll show you a couple other things. So speaking of the blog, so we go into the blog. I've had a blog forever. Um, I had to do some migration to get it over here, but uh, we basically just have articles and all of these articles are written in Markdown. So if we hop over to uh, my editor, my IDE here, we can take a look and uh, this is driven by Nuxt content. So if we go into a content folder, we have a blog folder and let's just like a, look at the latest one, which was in September 17th. And this was on the Spring Boot starter. So this is just a markdown file. I write all my blog posts in markdown. We have some metadata about it. Uh, I have a video. So if there's a video, I will display a video on the page. If not, I will display the cover image. Uh, there's some keywords about it. And then here's the article. So this is really nice. I can just write in markdown. And that's how I've been writing my blog post forever. So I was able to convert over to Next and Next Content fairly easy. There was one little issue I had, but that was because of the way I was doing things, not because of, of Next. So if we look at that, if we go ahead and click on this, now we're in here, we have this blog, uh, we have this video, and then we have the blog post. Uh, is there actually any, yeah, not a whole lot. Oh, there's some. So we also have a way to display uh, code in this nice format. Uh, we're using something under the hood to, to make that happen as well. That was built right into kind of Nux content, which was really great. And yeah, I think it just came out like really clean. All right, so that is the blog. Now, how do we search the blog? So we have this nice little um, search icon up here. If we click it, we get this fancy little uh, search. Again, we have a command K. The way that we're doing this is in Tailwind. I'm using a Tailwind UI component called a command palette. Looks something like this. And uh, let's just take a look at that. So the way that we display this is through a page. One of the things I really love about Nuxt is you get this file-based routing, so you don't have to set up like routing. You just kind of create folder structures and pages within there, and routes get created for you. So when it comes to the blog, I have a slug, which is like the individual um, blog post itself, and then we have a way to kind of display the listing of those blog posts. So here, uh, what we're doing is we are uh, going off and getting the content. So there's a way to like query content. And once we have that content, uh, we're doing some things to like display some, some data here. But uh, where is the search coming from? So the search is actually on our uh, default template, we see we're pulling in this thing called a search dialog. This is a component. So if I go into components and search dialog, this is the code to make this happen. So again, everything that I've done is available in uh, GitHub, on GitHub. I'll leave the link to the repository for all of this down below. Um, so we do some things. Um, we basically have this command palette. And this is, uh, you know, I had to pull the command palette out of Tailwind UI and then do some things to, to really kind of customize this to what I wanted it to do. 
But you'll see there's not a lot of code here. Pretty simple. What is it searching? Uh, it's searching a list of, I think, what, a 180 blog posts right now. So I just get a list of posts. I cache that because it's not going to um, change often. And then I go ahead and say, hey, um, let's filter on those titles uh, based on whatever someone is typing in there. So if I start typing, oh, oops, that is that one. So if I come over here and I start typing JDBC, we can say, look at the new JDBC client, and I can go ahead and enter down, and it takes us right to the blog post. So this is really cool. I think in the future, I want to be able to add other things to this, like, hey, I want to search through newsletters or courses or you know whatever other content. But right now, I just wanted to be able to search the blog post. All right, so the newsletter now, uh, we have a way to kind of display the last few newsletters that I've written. If you want to read them real time, you can go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter, put in your email and hit subscribe. Now, the way this is working is I use ConvertKit to house all of my email addresses and send out emails to that group. And they have some forms on there, like pre-built. So you can just say, hey, uh, here's, a, here's a form template. Go ahead and use that on the website. But with that comes a lot of JavaScript and not, not real clean forms. I just wanted like very simple forms in tail one format, uh, how they look really clean and nice. And then I wanted to subscribe to uh, whatever form I'm on. And the way that I do that is by using the ConvertKit API. So in Nuxt, you can go ahead and create some different APIs using the server side, using the server folder. So under server API, I have a convert kit folder and I have something in here called subscribe.posts. All this does is pull out my convert kit API key from my environment variables and it will send a request over to the convert kit API um, based on whatever form I'm in. And it will basically send a post request with my API key and the email. So now with this, I can call this anywhere in my application and I'm, I'm not calling the API directly. So this hides like my API key. You don't want to do this right from the client. You want to do this on the server so those API keys don't get exposed. So what's an example of this? If you go to the pages, newsletter, and on the homepage, you can see that we're just ha we have a form here with an action to that server route that we just created because again on the server side nux is creating an api route for me so now i can call api slash convert kit slash subscribe i'm passing in the form id i'm passing in the email address and boom we call off to our third party service to uh, do that and i do that in a couple different places uh, there's one on the home page to sign up and then uh, if you go ahead and look at the blog post, there is um, a sign up on the footer. Another thing that I didn't really mention when it comes to Nux content is um, one of the things I'm really excited about is what they're calling Markdown Components. So if we go into here and we see View Components, so every View Component created inside of the Components Content Directory will be available in Markdowns. And this is exciting. Now, not only can I use Markdown files, but if I have things that I want to reuse, I can put them into components and use them in my Markdown files. So one of the examples that I have of this already is if you look in content and let's see, I think I have, do I have a video in my latest one? Maybe not. Let's go into, um, let's see, I think so, yeah. Uh, do we have a video in here? Yes. So you can see I'm using a markdown component called YouTube. So if we go into the components and under, under content, we have a YouTube component. And this is really just using a uh, light YouTube uh, embedded plugin. And this is really nice because it's not just embedding this in an iframe, it's actually displaying an image. And when you click on it, then it loads it, uh, better performance. Uh, so I'm using this thing called Light YouTube. And now I just have this in a component and I can use this right in my markdown. So um, this is gonna be really cool to display all types of things in my blog posts and my newsletters. Um, and yeah, if I haven't mentioned that, uh, under uh, content, I have newsletter as well. So all of my newsletters that I write are basically driven by Nux content as well. So if we go over to newsletter and we click on one of these, 
this content is in Markdown, but yes, driven by Nux content again. So really, really cool to see. I have a speaking section where this is kind of dynamically driven now. So um, just kind of, you know, I don't know that anybody cares where I am next. Uh, I'm not Tony Robbins, but uh, this is more for me. Like, hey, here are my upcoming talks. Here are the talks that uh, that I've given. So really nice ability to kind of look at the archives of talks. I still got to clean this up. This isn't this isn't great, but this is now dynamic, and this is feeding off uh, some JSON data. So if I go into assets data events .json, you can see we have some JSON here, and that is what is building this out. So anything that is upcoming, it's going to show here um, on the main page, uh, some podcasts that I've done, and then anything that is kind of behind us uh, will show on the archives page. So that's speaking courses. I have some some courses out there. Haven't really updated this. Just kind of migrated this from the old site. And then a users page. Uh, a lot of the times people ask me, like, what am I using for creating content, for, you know, being a developer? Uh, what are some productivity tools? What is this website built on? And um, this is just like a collection of those with links to any of those. So if you wanted to grab the same camera that I'm using, you can go ahead and open this up and that will head over to Amazon. And yes, there are affiliate links on here, uh, but you don't get charged anymore. It really just kind of helps me out. Oh yeah, and I don't think I mentioned this. If you haven't signed up for my news newsletter yet, please do so. That really helps me out as well, being able to let you know what I'm up to every week uh, and when I get some new things out there. So again, love this dark mode. This is just, for me, I love the clean, kind of minimal look to it. Really happy with this, how this turned out. I can't say enough about Nuxt. The community in, around Vue.js and Nuxt is just amazing. And again, Nuxt kind of solved every problem that I ran into. Like, I need a site map. Oh, there's a plugin for that. Uh, I need to be able to, um, uh, when it comes to like observability, I had to tie into something called Sentry. Oh, there's a way to do that. So there just really seemed to be an answer for everything that I ran into, and I really appreciate that. So that's it. Uh, I just wanted to show this off. Uh, again, I will leave the link for this in the description below to the GitHub repository. You can grab all the code for this. Um, I don't know what the what the legal rights are around reusing a Tailwind template UI that I converted over to um, to Nuxt, but I think it should be okay. So if you want to kind of grab this and, and build your own, you can. Or if you want to change it up, that's great too. Uh, this is really just, uh, I hope this is a way for you to kind of learn how to build your own personal site, or maybe you want to migrate your site over to, uh, to Nuxt. Oh, and I guess I will mention that real quick. Also in the repo, one of the things that I had to do was migrate from an existing site over to here. One of the things that I found is that all the images for my blog posts were right next to my markdown files in my previous site. Now they needed to go into public images, blog, and then you know some kind of format. So I had to write some migration scripts to do that. And I didn't really want to write this. So I fired up ChatGPT, got real descriptive on what I was trying to do. And I think within an hour, I had this migration script ready to go that really kind of fixed everything that I needed to do when moving from the old site over to the new site. So I thought that was cool. This is one of the tasks that I absolutely love using ChatGPT for. Uh, I also used uh, ChatGPT for just, hey, I need to um, write a description of uh, this for my users page. That worked out well too. Any of these tasks like this, I feel like it's it's like, it does a great job and it's continually getting better. Um, so I'm a big fan of ChatGPT, Copilot. They really help me out in day-to-day -day tasks like this. So yeah, that's a new website, danvega.dev. I would appreciate your feedback. I would appreciate you signing up for the newsletter if you want, uh, mainly because I would like to make sure that that's working correctly. Um, but yeah, let me know in the, the comments below and let me know if you think that we are missing anything here. Maybe we can add some new features to the website. That'd be great. One more thing I want to mention really quickly. We went over a lot of features that were put into this website over 
you know, a few weeks. So this took a little while to put together and we talked about this in five minutes. There's a lot of cool stuff in here that, that went into like making this happen. So if you want to see me kind of dive deep on any one of these features, let me know. We'll kind of start from scratch from a different website and we can build it out together. I think it's all cool, but that's just me. Let me know if there's something you want to dive deep into and we'll certainly cover it on this channel. So thanks again. So yeah, thanks for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate it. And as always, friends, happy coding.